Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. The small letters of the Tuf Shin Zion in the Megillah and its connection with the Nuremberg Trials. So it's customary in the vast majority of Megillahs today to write in a smaller script than the rest of the letters. Three letters that are found within the names of the ten sons of Haman, and these letters are a small Tuf in Parshandasa, a small Shin in Parmashta, and a small Zion in the son whose name was Vaisasa. We will now attempt to discover or uncover the source and reasoning behind these small letters that are written and find an interesting and eerie connection that it has with the Nuremberg trials. So in the laws of Stam, which is the laws of writing a Sefer Torah, Mezuzah, and Tefillin, there are various Mesoiras, various traditions handed over from the generations, which include how to write paragraphs and words of the Sefer Torah, Tefillin, and Mezuzah. For example, by Sefer Torah, we have a Mesoira, which words are Malayas, which words are Chaseiras, which of course, if it is not followed carefully, can invalidate the entire Sefer Torah. We also have a concept of that's called Oisiei Ze'ires and Oisiei Srabasi. There's a tradition that certain letters of the Sefer Torah are written in small, and certain letters of the Sefer Torah are written in large. This is not just in the Sefer Torah, which is Hamishei Chumshei Mikra, but throughout the entire Tanakh, there is a Messiah which states which letters are written in small and which are written in big. In this Messiah, we know exactly which letters must be small and which large, and there aren't a lot. In the whole Hamishei Chumshei Torah, there's only four Oisye Ze'ires, four small letters. Different Sfarim record these Messiahs of which letters should be small and which should be big, but interestingly enough, none of the Sifri Messiahs record writing a small tough shin zayin while we do find in the gemara in meseches megillah that a person is to lengthen the saying of the letter vav of isasa and there's two interpretations in this if it means in voice to vocalize it longer others explain it to mean that one is to write it as a long letter but no mention is made of any of these letters that we mentioned that are in small in many of today's Megillahs. Not only is it not recorded in the Gemara and in the Sifri Messiris that we have available, but in many of the Sifri Achreinim, such as the Kol Yaakov, which was written by the author of the Kafa Chaim of Yaakov Sefer just under a hundred years ago. He does not record such a tradition. So where does this come from? And why do people write in many of the Megillahs today these small letters? So going back in Megillahs, we have Megillahs available that were written hundreds upon hundreds of years ago. And while not all of them have a small, tough Shin and Zion written within the Ten Sons of Haman, many do. For example, the Megillah of the Rebbe Marash has a small, tough Shin Zion. And so too, many Megillahs hundreds of years prior to his time likewise have this. So there's got to be some source and some reason that we have not uncovered. So our investigation now begins. The Machsa Vitri, which was a student of Rashi in the 1100s, in page 213 writes that the Zayin of Isasa and the Tuf of Etichtev Esther is to be written in small. These are the first sources that we find relating to writing small letters in the Megillah, one of them being within the Ten Sons of Haman, the Zayin of Isasa. So we found a source in Machsa Vitri for one of the small letters in the third word that has a small letter. Digging a little deeper, we find the Agois Maimonis, a student of the Marami Rottenberg, who writes in his commentary on the Megillah, on Hilchus Megillah of the Rambam, in the name of his teacher, the Maram of Rottenberg, to write a small Shin Tov Zayin in the Megillah in the Ten Sons of Ham. This is written in chapter 2 of Hilchus Megillah of the Rambam, Ois Ayin. So we found a source for the three small letters written today, dating back to the times of Rashi, and dating back to times of Marami Rottenberg, but not in the same order as we write it today. Marami Rottenberg writes to do a Shin Tov Zayin, while we do a Tov Shin Zayin. In any event, it's close enough. What is interesting, and many have already pointed this out, it that, is that these small letters which, as we say, find their source in a German Rishain, the Marami Rottenberg, 630 years later, produce a remarkable prophecy. As in the year Tafshin Zion, 1946, 
after the conclusion of the Nuremberg trials, 10 Nazi war criminals were hung. So in the 10 sons of Haman, who were hung at the same day, we have the year Tavshin Zayin spelled out in which the 10 Nazi war criminals were hung. And the first source of this custom is in a German Rishain, as is documented in the journals of the hangings that occurred at that time, that Julius Streicher, who was the G severe Jew-hating minister of propaganda for the Nazi regime, when he was hung, he stated as follows, and I quote from the Joseph Kingsbury Smith New York Times article written the next day in 1946, Streicher was swung suddenly to face the witnesses and glared at them. Suddenly he screamed, Purimfest 1946, and shortly afterwards he was hung. Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. Our free services of making Torah knowledge available to the public depends on donors like you. Please help us continue our work through making even a small contribution at shuhanarcharav.com under the daily halacha dedication section or in the subscription page. Also, check out our online courses and many safarim available for purchase that will both enhance your Torah knowledge and help support our work.